In this presentation we're going to look at ANOVA procedures with R and uh, applications to analytical chemistry. A standard solution was prepared containing 16% by weight of chloride. Three titration methods, each with a different technique of endpoint end determination, that's what we're going to call our method, were used to analyze the standard solution. And just to think about that for a second before we continue, more or less they should have the same results on average. Okay. Now, the procedure was carried out by four different analysts and the order was randomized. And really what should happen with the analysts is that they should get more or less the same results as well. So just think about that for a second. That the methods should more or less give the same results and if the analysts are all properly trained they should more or less be doing the things the same way. The order of the experiments were randomized, okay, and the results are as follows. So here we have it in there are our results. Uh, our first factor is method, A, B, C are the levels, and our second uh, factor is the analysts, analyst 1, analyst 2, analyst 3, analyst 4. So what we're going to do is set this experiment up in R. Let's go to R here shortly. So if you just, could, uh, first thing what I'm going to do, oops, that's the old one there. First thing what I'm going to do is actually just input the titration values. Okay. I have them off screen here now, but just get them on screen. There we go. There we go. So I've inputted the titration values. Now what I'm going to do is input the method. So the method for each of those 16, or sorry, each of those 12 uh, observations. Let's go back to R here. Maybe sort of a bit clunky. There we go. Now let's just think about this for a second. This is a method. Oh, sorry, this uh, method is a character. So what I want to do is actually turn that into a factor. So I'm going to transform that into a factor. Okay. Uh, so if you don't have a... Uh, not that it's a big deal, but it's just better to have it uh, set up as a factor. Okay, so meth. So we're going to convert it into a, f um, a factor. With the levels, ordered levels. A, B... Uh, C and D. Now as it turns out this last part wouldn't have been absolutely necessary because if the default ordering would have been alphabetical order and they're in alphabetical order but let's suppose there was some different ordering like high low medium in that case high would come first low would come second medium would come third in the hierarchy and that doesn't make sense if you think about it. So low should come first, then medium, then high. So it's just as if you want to specify the ordering of the, the levels, that's how you might do it there. Okay, let's have a look at that now. Class of meth. Factor, perfect. Uh, let's do the same thing for analyst. So what we're going to do here is I am going to go back. Uh, I have it off screen here, but essentially what I'm going to do is type in something like that. Okay. Uh, just be very particular that the the, the groupings are uh, correct. We have three uh, methods, but we have four analysts, and so the patterns should be different. So, for example, the first four um, uh, inputs for method are is method A, but we each by uh, one, two, three, four are all the analysts who, uh, they all have a, a result by method A and likewise by method B and by method C. Uh, what I'm going to do here is turn that into a factor as well. So I'm just going to just conv quickly convert it the same way. This, might, you might find after a while that what I'm doing actually is a little bit more than is needed for this particular data set, but it's just how you do things in general. So okay and there we go so now we're ready to carry out our ANOVA procedure so I'm going to call this model uh, two-way two-way two -way ANOVA model two-way and that is AOV by, of titration explained by uh, meth and analyst okay you could actually turn um, all that data into a data frame. It's slightly beyond what I'm looking at in this particular procedure, but if you have a data frame, this is the exact same way you do it anyway. You can turn that data into a data frame. 
If you don't, that well, the way we just done it is fine. Okay, so that should set up my model. I'll give it a second there. The recording software can slow things down. There we go. So the summary of model 2A. Let's have it there. Okay, so method, analyst, residuals. There's no total one there. So uh, just as a quick remark, there are three methods, so the degrees of freedom is two. Uh, there are four levels of analysts, so the degrees of freedom is three. The number of levels minus one. So the sums of squares mean square. What we have here is the test statistic, F and uh, for both uh, values. This is the test statistic here, uh, 1.279 for method, not 0.787 for analyst. And what we have here at the last column is the p-values. Now you might notice neither of, them are, neither of them are significant, okay? So, but anyway, what does that mean? Let's interpret those p-values. And in both cases, what we're like, to, oh, by the way, sort of no, one more thing to sort of remark upon. In our data set, there is only a single measurement per treatment group. That means we can't find an interaction effect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of quickly state uh, the uh, null and alternative hypothesis. What I'll do here is just get a blank page. Essentially what we have here is in the first case method essentially uh, we would sort of say H0 no significant uh, main effect for method, something like that, something along those lines. I'm just keeping it short. Okay. In this case we have a p-value of not, we have a, a p-value that's quite high. Okay. Not 0.345. So in that case, not significant. Significant, uh, not significant p-value. Sign, significant uh, p, uh, uh, significant uh, p-value. Uh, p-value is not significant is what I should, I'm trying to sort of say. Okay, so we fail to reject null. That's a slightly sped up uh, version of the what we're actually testing, uh, but just for the sake of brevity, I'm, I'm just realizing how long this is going on. Likewise, the same thing we'll do for solution. Literally, solution. Sorry, not solution, analyst. Um, so just my pen is broken here. So analyst is there a significant uh, effect for analyst? So does the do the results vary uh, if depending on whether or not it's one analyst or the other? Let's go here. The p value is not point five four three. So again not significant p-value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, 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 the, the same result all over again for the uh, analyst as well. We P-value not significant, fail to reject the null hypothesis. If it was significant, you'll sort of see stars or asterisks beside the p-value. Okay, and again, just to be clear, the p-value for this test is under the column PR greater than F. That's the column there that you go looking for your p-values. If there is a significant p-value you might see some asterisks beside it. Okay, so that's 2A ANOVA with R.